be you'll be working with each of these sponsors in in the various rooms today. But they, we've been on the road. This is actually the tenth event. We've done ten of these um, across the U.S. starting in February. So I just wanted to say a special thanks to our sponsors because they put in a lot of miles and a lot of hard work. And uh, Microsoft, Adobe, Dino, Atomic Learning. CompuTrace, Vernier, k &S, and special thanks to Tech and Learning who has hosted all of these events and managed all the logistics for us and uh, that's a tremendous amount of work. So thank you very much. So inspiring the next generation of learners. Uh, HP and Intel are very committed to education and we have some statistics up here about the, the reach and the hours and the number of teachers that have been professionally trained. And we just really want to communicate our commitment to education and, and our corporate um, investment, not only in products, but in time. And, and um, you can see on, from Intel's perspective, um, one billion investment over the past 10 years and 100 million annually. They train 7.4 teachers ar around the world. And at Intel and both at HP, we think that professional development is such a key to making technology programs successful. So this is a really, really key component. Um, and, and I'll talk a little bit more about professional development. You'll have a classroom here today that's dedicated to that. Um, and we've, we've done that on purpose because we think it is truly so important. And so they're in 75 countries. That's, that's huge. That's almost, yeah, I mean, that's just everywhere in the world. And two million hours of volunteer work from Intel employees. And so I just wanted to point out what a huge, huge event that is. And from HP's perspective, we have a, a philanthropic grant program. I'll talk a little bit more about that at the end of the day. But um, 20 million we donated in 151 grants last year in 28 countries. So I'll tell you a little bit more about those grant, that grant program and how to access that at the end of the day. So the jobs of tomorrow are here today. In a recent study of 400 US employers, these were the skills that they were looking for beyond just your basic reading, writing, and arithmetic skills. These are those 21st century skills that they're talking about. And so, as we prepare students to go into their real lives, to go on to higher education, to go on to their workforce, we really need to be preparing students with skills that they'll have to succeed and to, and to get these jobs of tomorrow. And so we really think technology is a key in making that happen. Collaboration, critical thinking, creativity, resourcefulness, all of those key, key skills. So you'll see, we, we hope that you'll see today how we can really facilitate, how technology and curriculum integration can really facilitate and addressing NCLB. So NCLB is it is what it is, and, and whether which, whichever way you feel about it, people have very strong opinions on it, on it. But it is what it is, and it may be changing in the near future. We're not sure, but the, for today, we have um, formatted this event to really address that. And so it's no mistake that you'll be attending language arts classes, science classes, math classes. It's no mistake that we think that. Um, you know, professionally highly qualified teachers are important. As I mentioned, we have a room dedicated to professional development today. You'll see strategies and tools in there that, that you can take back to your schools and districts to really, to really make that successful. And then technological competency. Um, you'll be interacting with computers and technology and software throughout this whole day. And, and so it's by no mistake that we've designed the event that way. Um, and, and so we really hope that you'll get to see what, what this looks like from a student perspective. And so when we talk about this educational technology adoption model, um, we talked about one-to-one -one as being really that aspirational point on the model. So a quick show of hands, how many of you are doing one-to-one -one computing or have laptops for all of your students? A handful. That's good. That's what we're seeing across the country, really, at all of these events. We have a handful of people that are that are up here in this one-to-one. -one. We know that one-to-one -one is hard. We know it takes a lot of work. We know that it's an evolution over time. And so that we hope, you know, today that you'll be able to see what that aspirational model looks like from a student's perspective. You'll be sitting in those seats working on uh, math lessons using Dino software and, and HP PCs, and we really see what that looks like. But we recognize that there's a whole lot of, a whole lot of you that are down somewhere else on this spectrum. And so, you know, we would just want to recognize that and help you have some tools and some strategies to take away today to, um, to make that successful. And shifting the learning paradigm, I know Leslie, our keynote speaker, will talk a little bit about this, but really moving away from what I'm doing right now, one person, the teacher, talking to many people who are supposed to be paying attention, who may or may not be, and, uh, and lecturing, and, and you're listening. So really moving to a student-centric model, where the student has the PC, they're interacting, um, they're collecting.
collaborating, they're building all those 21st century skills, or working with their peers, or working with their teachers. And, and the teacher becomes the guide. They're providing the project-based curriculum, and the teacher is really the learning guide, and no longer the sage on the stage, as they say. So with that, I wanted to introduce today's keynote speaker. Leslie maybe didn't know her picture was gonna be up there. <laughs> Leslie Wilson is president and founder of the One to One Institute. She's a former educator, has a great history and a great background in, in the educational field. So without further ado, Leslie, 